watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, The Hoosier Garage. Okay, so it was a few weeks ago that I did the Scotch Bright pad to the uh, inside the tape lines that I made. Basically, our template, our graph, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you might remember, because I mean, this is for me, it's a few weeks ago. You're probably just seeing this in the last scene. So keep that in mind. I don't always know what I did. Um, I came down here and it almost made this look like a bird head, like an eagle with a beak and all that stuff. I wanted to kind of eliminate that a little bit, so I had to, a few weeks to think about it, and I decided to come as tightly as I can and just swoop up. I might actually come in a little lower on the final tank tape line, and then it'll look more transitional. And the way I did uh, our spoiler on the front, the very corners down there where all the colors come together, they wisp out really small, the black just kind of, uh, it grows into a, a solid line up in here. You'll just have to watch and see. Not the best at explaining stuff like that. But what I need to do, I've been driving this thing around, got a lot of dust on it, road dirt, stuff like that. We want to degrease it, so I went down to O'Reilly, got Duplicolor. Uh, the only one they had, the premium cleaner, grease and wax remover. Go over it a couple times, make sure we get the seams really well, anywhere there's a hole like this. And uh, I'm gonna have to take the door handles off. But I wanna at least do it first so I can put my tape on there. So that the tape will have a nice solid, clean surface to clean, clean to. So I'm gonna go especially around the whole perimeter of the stripes where it will be. And then as we get this other stuff off here in the next several hours or so, then we can just give it a really good going over a couple times to where we don't get any more residue on here. So a little extra work on this. It's very difficult. Like I said earlier, there's, you might see the light shining here. I'm not sure, but it dips here, bubbles back out, bubbles up here. And whatever you're trying to do with our rend, uh, original rendition is just to try to get it to, to look right from different angles because that's a very two-dimensional surface. But when you get it here, you see other stuff going on. So I, I came up with this. I decided I'm happy with that. We're gonna do the stripe a little bit more like we did on the spoiler on the, the, when the tips come together right here. And um, so we're just gonna modify that a little bit and that's where that's gonna be. I've already transferred this tape line to the other side. I had to make a new template just like we did earlier. That way it's, it's very symmetrical. It's a mirror image. Uh, if somebody's sharp enough to see it on one side, they might see it on the other, or if you have a side-by-side, -side, or if you're standing up here at the front of it and you're looking and something is kind of dipping around and you see a little heavier on one side than the other, then that's just gonna kind of mess with your head, all right? So this is all degreased. I have retaped everything. This is the final tape line for the black. The black will go on first, and then when it, it cures and dries, then we can remove all of this, add other tape lines, and then put each respective color and it'll be the yellow on the top and then the orange on the bottom so that the, the tradesman 200 emblem will be dead in the orange and then there'll be a black line splitting it all up okay so you know you go down looking that way we have it up on and all set up ready to go now the longest straight is from about here all the way up to before it curls off on that edge up there so just a little tip, if you haven't messed with any kind of tape like this before, this is the 3M. Uh, specifically, let me pull this out here. There's our, I think it's a number 26 or N.26344. This is the, uh, that's basically quarter inch wide. And it's this uh, Scotch 3M 233. Um, I always get it on eBay from a uh, source I think it's Metro Jogger but uh, I've been getting this stuff for years and a business I had previously I would use this stuff and I use it now because it's basically pin striking thing that you can you know fine line kind of stuff little things you need to know almost like regular tape but it's a little more sensitive in this stuff because it's thinner so see so you have a pretty nice straight vertical line there well obviously if I pull that a little bit look what we got see that little kink in there you want to 
be cognizant of that as you're going down through here. If you, you go and pull it like this, and you're trying to get the line, and you maybe hold it down and then pull, be careful because that'll give that little kink in there in one way or the other. So when you go to try to continue your line or you're trying to you know, make a line to begin with and it's been pulled on any, you're gonna get a little bit of that waving at you stuff. So try to have some fresh areas or if you have a small version of this, sometimes you can, you can run the tape down. So here's where it is right here. You can run the tape down and then as you get to the point, you can pivot it a little bit and then pivot back. And sometimes that'll help. But I would kind of advise against it unless you've really worked with this stuff a lot because it'll get frustrated, you'll, you'll keep seeing it. If you stand back, you have to keep standing back and looking down the, the throw of it and you'll get little, little slight wobble wobbles. And you want it to look as good as you possibly can. It may not be the best, but what you can control, try to do that. So I'm gonna just break this and throw it away, okay? Now down here, we'll show you and you can judge for yourself. I can't be as steady with it, but you can see, and then it starts to pick up right here. This is where the curve starts. It picks up and does the wrap around. I've stopped it right here. We'll have to clean all this up. Uh, probably remove some rubber here, which is just pushed in there. Get it out and then we'll We'll get that tape and painted properly. But right here, about as straight as I could get it. There's a little spot where it rolls down just a little bit there. I don't know if you can even see it. I might pull that up a little bit, real careful. I might even cut it right here and bring it back together, but we'll see. We'll see. A lot of this is where some of my old body work where I attached the new panel to the old body and I wasn't perfect. Didn't come out as great as a lot of guys would, but that's on me. So we're gonna run to the other side and we're gonna start taping. Pretty much the same thing, you just have the interruption. Uh, the hinges are not so much an interruption other than just visually. Now we have a door handle here and then it, the windows are gonna cut into it. So we'll continue here, we'll wrap around the, we'll tape really tight around the window, I should say, with the wide tape and kind of push it back in there and try to get it to seal down. Crazy memories of my yesterday Those high school loves that fade away in the background of my mind I think we're song I wasted my time The other days they come and they go The love gets better That I know When the seasons They can change your life Some are bad Some are alright paper okay I uh, decided against using the plastic like you've probably seen me use in the past because we're gonna be doing multiple colors so I don't want that uh, previous coat of paint like for instance the black where it hardens up on the plastic and then I go to mask off around I don't want all that flaking out when I hit it with like the yellow or the orange and it blowing it all over the place so the paper uh, whether you use actual body shop paper or something like this will probably be better when you masking off a main area and then going to kind of hyper focus on uh, different colors on the stripe itself or other graphics so 
a little bit better there. So this stuff works really nice because all you gotta do is lift it up a little bit and I'm using the wide like two inch tape all the way down through here. I've taken the door handle off. I gotta get the, uh, the lock out and uh, do the same thing on the other side. I also did the back jam, like the, the two doors in the back, all along the top because that paint would just spray up and behind, behind there and it would just be a, a total mess. So I taped off everything up in there. Uh, kind of the same situation in areas on the other side. The doors are similar construction, but uh, it's only kind of cut through a little intersection of that, so no big deal there. Uh, just kind of take some time, mask off. Mask back uh, mask on the jam side where you can see the seam and same thing here made a nice cutoff area and uh, did the same thing back there so I'm going to continue masking a lot of this off and removing the areas that are in the path of the stripe and we'll jump in next all right next day who's your garage time to degrease and make sure all our tape is down nice and tight in the loose areas Double check for anything else that looks out of place. Any gaps in your taping, uh, any open areas, stuff like that. Just make sure it's all down nice and snug. Take your time because the allure of uh, striping, I think, or any kind of custom graphics is that it doesn't have any crawl under the tape. You know, it's just nice and sharp. And sometimes that's hard to get even when you do it right. It's weird. Do all this and then degrease a couple times and then get your paint ready and paint. <laughs> Later in the day, this stuff is actually dried to the touch. Um, the tape area, you know, the masking, all that kind of stuff. Took some tape, press it down on there. We're gonna actually scratch it in and then pull it off. There's nothing, no paint pulled off of that. So we know we are cured, at least partially, enough to work with it. It's not fully cured. But what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna protect the black that we wanna keep, okay? So I have half inch tape. That's what I've decided to use. I want a nice thick black outline around these colors. And um, basically we're just gonna ride the inside of the tape line that is masking the outside of this off, okay? Now, yes, it's a little harder to see since it's now black. Just paint it over. But if you get your lights around it, you can see exactly where the edge is and just follow it. Now, as you can see, it's completely outlined from about here all the way back, and it's also around the back doors, around the corner there. That's where I stopped. Right here, where it comes up to the little nose or the beak, that's going to be detailed a little bit differently. I'm not going to just ride this all the way up to the point. I want the points up here where every color is starting, and it's a real wisp, a little arrow-like. Deal. I want them to all be very present all the way up to the front. So to kind of give the transition of uh, motion, the, the idea of motion, where this is here, I went ahead just from the door edge back, I just kept that in a half inch, but right about here, and as I taper forward, I'm going to use our eighth inch tape. And we're gonna come off of this one and just gradually taper it until it pinches up right next to the edge of this, okay? So we want it about that thickness at the very beginning. So by the time it gets from here to here, it needs to jump up to this thing. So it's just gonna get a little wider. But we did the same thing on the spoiler on the ends. So we're just gonna be consistent with that and ride it all the way through that way. So I'm gonna get the taping up the rest of this. And uh, then I gotta do the tape line down the middle. That's gonna take a little bit of effort of uh, getting everything squared up because there is no designation for that. It's basically, um, I'm gonna have to, I want them to be even. So 
uh, same size. So here it's going to split right in the middle. Back here, I have it planned to kind of ride back a little different. Uh, it's not going to be equal. So just how I designed it, the uh, rendition, rendering of it is what I'm kind of going after. I'm trying to get as close as I can. Now is a great time to like and subscribe to the Hoosier Garage. improvising this middle line and I initially thought that I was going to have this part heavier than this part but I was looking at my rendering and it just looks that way um, I'd, I'd done it over a year and a half ago so I was looking at it and I realized it's pretty equal so I basically had the two flat sections here and extended like a, a yardstick so it went down through here went up through here so you get the uh, ability to measure and it did the same thing here and it measured across split it right in the middle and then measured a couple more times from here to here here to here here to here here to here actually from about here to here kind of a short span there and it made sure that it's not clocked wrong okay now i did the, the sharp line here but that's just to get to establish the uh the trajectory the degree here of it so I'm going to have to duplicate a similar curve to this, which I can use one of my old templates I made, and just try to soften it up right in there and do the same thing right there. So that'll pretty much do that. You can see how up there at the front, you saw me taper it a little bit. And like this is two eighth inch or two quarter inch pieces that go up to the half inch and just they taper down to the quarter, uh, yeah, the quarter inch. Did the same thing here, did the same thing there. Now I just went ahead and ran some extra tape alongside of it to cover the little gap. And that's another thing we we'll want to discuss is whatever we're doing here, even though we're following along this line, it might leave a little spot there where there's some of uh, paint behind it. So you'll want to re-mask over top of this just to secure it, that you don't peel all this tape off and see this is supposed to be yellow. You'll see a little bit of yellow poking through here and there. Now we're another day in. That's a multi-day process. But I have the top stripe masked specifically. So you've got a little skirt going on here. Underneath here is where the orange will be, but we want to not contaminate that area. So this is ex exclusively for the top banana, lemon twist yellow, however you like to term it, per division. But uh Went through, uh, last night got it all masked off, uh, degreased it, wax and grease remover, and then just did it again now, because you know, overnight there might be some spiders or something, you know, it's not a completely sealed garage by any means. So, went through and wiped it off again. So basically it's ready for spring. So I'm gonna get my yellow, gonna get my hardener, gonna get my reducer, the air pump's on, it's full, and we're gonna go to work.
yellow is on. You saw that. I've covered over this kind of like in a bubble fashion so it doesn't touch it as much. It is not as cured as the black was yesterday because they're just more coats. You have to put more of that yellow on because mainly I was putting it on top of a black base, which is this. It's going to the darkest color possible. So you have multiple, I think I've had about six coats of that yellow as opposed to the three coats of the black. And I don't know what we're gonna have on this orange, maybe four coats, something like that. And just to get it to, you had to lay it on real sticky just to get it to cover, and there we was. So it's gonna take a little bit longer to cure. There's more material built up. So it was pretty much dry to the touch, but you can tell it might be a little tender. So with that in mind, I just taped around it. Uh, the weekend's about ready to end. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the orange on here. That's gonna be what's on this black stripe right here, all the way around. And hopefully, if we can peel it off very carefully, at least some of it. Yeah, look. look, it's outside now. Masking is all off. We've got one of our tradesmen in once back on. There's a side pipe on this side. Everything's going on this side, pretty much. Need our back bumper, obviously. There's the side where it cuts through the windows. I like it. Nice and bold, colorful, yet smooth. And you know, this van needs a lot of work uh, still with the paint. I mean, there's some jam work that needs to be touched up and a little this, a little that, and I'll probably eventually clear coat this whole thing. But I'm gonna let everything cure out real good. Make sure it holds up good before we go doing anything like that. But uh, I'll give you an idea of what it all looks like so far, obviously. Some stuff, not all the way there yet. This side pipe was uh, the hardest one to put on because it's got a different depth on the rocker to the back. And uh, so I went ahead and got the hardest one done first. You can still see the, the active pipe there. But uh, we'll get the other side on and go from there. And to kind of meld it all together, you can see the inside of it how it fuses with the outside yeah, and stuff I need to touch up is stuff like this obviously you do a lot of that with a brush and just a lot of touch up this wants to fall shut so we'll just let it hang however it wants to go but we got orange carpet we got orange stripes yellow this that and the other we've got our beams with the lighting in them all the stuff up here sunroof Still need to hook up some lights here. Little stuff. It's down to little stuff now. But there we have it. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you like it, how it turned out. I know I do. And uh, we're gonna share a tip on what to do with these emblems if you don't have the right retainers on them. So stay tuned for a real short tip video on that one. So this is it, everybody. So again, hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you like following along. Thanks for subscribing and liking if you haven't done so yet. I'd appreciate it if you would. And uh, until next time, thanks for coming to the Hoosier Garage. <laughs>